Hey, what's up everybody? Russ here. A little bit different of a video for you. My thumb, it's actually pretty well healed, but still got a little bandage on it. It's a little sore. Back is feeling better. And today I'm going to just share with you a little bit of stuff. Isn't going to be very much. I'm really going to reference you to a bunch of other videos because I'm not quite where I need to be to share with you exactly what I'm trying to express. So today's date is 11, uh, 29, 2017. All right, it's about 7:53 in the a.m. All right, so a lot of people keep forgetting um, and/or are not aware um, of the fact that electrical components aren't really as they seem. So, a wire, okay, a wire that looks like this, a capacitor, okay, an inductor, and a resistor. Now, what we need to realize, okay, is that the component, right, that's this, so these are just basic components, all right, when we subject them to different things, all right, they act a little bit different. So I'm going to make three columns here. Well, two more, actually. Um, no, I'll make three. I think I can see that all right. I think I light my light's okay. There you go. Had some bad reflections, so I had to set up the light a little different, but it should be fine. Um, so we're going to look at three different things. Okay, we're going to look at low frequency, okay, low frequency, oh, you know what, is this a dry erase? This is a wet erase, I'm going to have to get this wet to dry, get this off, it's alright, it's a better marker. So we've got low frequency behavior, okay. So what does a wire act like when it's low frequency? It has internal resistance, looks like resistance. Okay? Most of us are using components in this range, except for when we do things that I'll talk about next. But most of the time, conventionally, we look at components like this. Either, well, because we're taught that way. Okay, so what does a capacitor look like at, at lower frequencies? Looks like a capacitor. Okay. What does um I'm gonna need some more room than that. Oh well. What does an inductor look like? Looks like an inductor. What does a resistor look like? looks like a resistor. So this is low resistance usually for a wire unless it's really small. Um, but it's still you could call it a resistance. Anytime you put a wire between two points it has a resistance and if you were critical about it you'd need to know that. Most of us we don't really care. You hook up a battery to a motor and it'll run. We don't care too much about the resistance between the battery and the motor. But when you get to a certain point all these things really 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 are important so now we're going to talk about high okay frequency behavior now the thing about this is most of us um, most of us don't even realize that we play with this most of us don't realize that we all think all our components act like this but that's not true. 
Okay, when you're working with pulsed DC systems or very high frequency AC systems, right? When I say pulsed DC, I mean the pulse needs to come in, right, and be as sharp as possible and sharp as possible. Okay, like like a wave like this. You know, if you have more of a um, uh, an AC wave, right? then it's, it's not so critical because you don't have these sharp pulses but when you get past a certain frequency you get into this field of things um, now a lot of you are like this is all basic stuff for us, I already know this, but you're forgetting when you go to here you do have serious propagation delay from current and voltage which for some reason a lot of you think there's no such thing as delay in current and voltage but and I'm not talking about on a, an, an individual component. I'm not talking about a phase shift. I'm talking about actual delay. Um, when you get to a certain frequency, you start having these strange behaviors. So what does a resistor look like at high frequency? Well, it looks like an inductor, okay, tied to a resistance all right, coupled basically to ground through a cap. That's actually what you've got to consider a wire acting like at high frequency. Any length of wire is going to really act exactly like this, and you need to be very critical of that. What does a capacitor look like at high frequency? looks like that. It looks like an inductor, which is the wire leads, okay, a resistance, which is um, partly due to the dielectric in here, and then you have a capacitor because that's what it is. This is actually what it looks like, okay? So these things are called parasitics, and they are additions to the component at these frequencies, and that has to do with um, well, I'll talk about that next, but that I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you a little bit why that is. So, what does an inductor look like? Well, an inductor looks like a resistance of the wire itself, okay, coupled to the inductance with capacitance across the wire. So, you actually have what appears to be capacitors in between every single winding on this entire thing. Okay, you actually have this. Um, and then if you've got multiple layers this way or that way, you have to add that up. Then you've got total capacitance and you put anything around this at high frequency like a big aluminum plate and you'll add that on. You actually add on capacitance to ground. I'm not going to draw that here because these are just components by themselves, not including the outside interference. What does a resistor look like? A resistor, okay, looks like inductance from the leads right and then it acts as its original component a resistor with capacitance across it okay so when you start thinking this is all you get right these are ideal components right these are ideal components pure resistance pure inductance pure capacitance a wire with no resistance right Maybe in the superconducting world you can achieve these goals. But at low frequency, you even have to add the resistance of the wire, even even in your traces on your circuit boards. You know, capacitors act pretty close to capacitors, inductors, resistors. They all act pretty well okay. And that's because of the curve, okay, that they have. So I'm going to draw the curve over here. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, when you start working with AC or pulse DC, um, you have to start working with something called, and this stuff is isolated from this stuff, um, Z, okay, is equal to the resistance, okay? So that's what component Z is in an AC system, is it's the resistance, okay? Now, it, it, it's the resistance, right? on this AC or pulse DC stuff, it's the resistance not of just the component but of all of these factors. 
Okay, and this is where you get your propagation delays all start to get act really screwy. Um, so what I'm going to do on this side over here, I'm going to draw a chart. And this is the frequency response. Okay, so this is the... the response. Alright, and you have frequency on this domain. Okay, and you have inductance, I'm sorry, you have uh, impedance or... Um, well, it has to be called impedance or you guys will get confused, but don't forget impedance is just the resistance and I, I like I said, I'm going to give you some videos in the description that will talk about some of these things. I'll put some real basic ones and then I'll put some advanced ones I want you to watch. So if you start watching one and you already know it, you might want to watch the entire um, video because it might have other things in there that you think you know but you cannot learn what you think you already know, so you should watch it anyway. Okay? Should draw these a little bit bigger. Okay, this is probably supposed to be a little F. But, the reason, the, oh, ha. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know why I drew that there, but anyway. Um, so this is the response. Okay? So a wire, right, according to frequency down here on the bottom, Okay, the curve looks something like this. Now you say, Russ, what is this? This is the resistance of the component at different frequencies. So at lower frequencies, okay, so low frequency, uh, and then you start even getting into here, you start getting into high frequency, okay? And what you're seeing is, is the component actually depending on the component almost all of them change a little bit but this may not be very dramatic for certain components which are designed to be non um, that don't change like this but at some point at some high frequency everything acts differently and these peaks right here that I'm going to start drawing on everything are most likely the resonant point okay of this circuit okay so if you don't know about resonance, I'll put a couple videos down in there, but it's important because when you get to high frequency, you got to know about this stuff, which is what we play with when we work with pulsed systems. Okay? Especially anything with super sharp rise and fall times, you're actually playing with resonance of the component itself, so the self-resonant components. Right. Well, you know what I just did? I just drew that one for this one. I'm sorry. That's why I'm looking at it funny. Okay. It's okay. Let me redraw this one. I'm a human. I make mistakes. Okay, um, so I'm sorry. I messed up the resistance completely, but you know that's me. So this one, right, looks something like that, where the higher the frequency, um, due to usually I believe the skin effect. Which again, all these terms you have to go look up. So the skin effect actually is what causes this. The inside of the wire, um, the inside of the wire actually doesn't conduct anymore at certain frequencies and you only get the outer layers the higher the frequency the smaller the outer the layers that's why you use small wire at high frequency like Litz wire because you're actually working with the skin effect so that makes more sense for the uh, for the wire and then the capacitor is the one that looks like this alright so this is where you get this sharp peak another sharp peak and it looks something like that um, and again, this is the, this makes more sense now how, how I was explaining it. This dip is the resonant frequency, okay, usually parallel here in series there. Um, and I might have that backwards. This one might do parallel first, then series. This one might do series first and parallel because of its configuration. But don't quote me on that. Um, those are the things I'm actually looking for myself. So if you know the answer to those questions exactly, you could answer them down there, but um, Uh, just like anyone else, I'm still learning every little detail the best I can. 
So this one looks something like that, right? You have a you have the reverse. Um, yeah, actually, you know what? I think that is exactly that is exactly right. This is um, a resonant peak. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. So I'll have to look that up, but I'm pretty sure. Um, see, current it acts as a short. So yeah. So the lower resistance. Okay, that's exactly what it is. So this is um, basically a low resistance. So basically the resistance of the component. But uh, anyway, the point is, is one of these is series, one of these is parallel. One passes current, one passes voltage. So from my understanding, series uh, series resonance. Okay, resonance between um, components like this in this manner, so oscillating between the cap and the conductor in a series mode like this, um, gives you, it's a, it's a voltage uh, controlled oscillation. And, uh, and the other one is uh, here where you're passing current back and forth from the inductor to the capacitor, and that's a current controlled uh, resonant oscillation. And so a current controlled oscillation is usually means it acts as a short Um, and series acts as a open. That's kind of reverse of what here, but anyway, all information that, uh, that, um, uh, like I said, I wasn't quite prepared, but you can look up these details. I'll link you to all the places where you can learn and read about this because they do a better job at explaining it, apparently, than me. <laughs> all right, so, boop, this looks about like that. Okay, a resistor, right, acts just like this. There's a resonant pink here, and there's usually not much inductance on here, so it's a little bit different. Um, so, the point of what I'm trying to express to you right now is when you guys work uh, with simple things, all right. So this column, right, could could be considered DC, okay, or low frequency AC, right, constant AC, right. But even when you step into the realm of pulse DC, oh my, P U L S E D DC or high frequency AC. You start getting this type of stuff, all right. And the reason is, is because of these curves, right? You never really see the self-resonant frequency of a component until you get into this. So what I'm going to briefly talk about is what happens um, when you have pulse DC when you make these short pulses. So let me erase this board, and I will explain that to you. And the reason I'm going to explain that to you is because. You can find, right, pretty easily um, where, uh oh, I erased the date, where the, uh, oh boy, camera's falling. Hang on, everybody, earthquake. We are, we are in California right now, you know. Uh, oh, that is beautiful. I didn't realize this was a wet erase marker. As long as it still draws. All right, 29, 17. Oh, it's still wet right there. All right. Um, all right. Does it all dry? That's pretty dry. It's still wet there. Okay. So um, briefly, right? I want to talk about what happens when we have a pulse. All right, a voltage. All right. Let's make this zero and let's make this 12 volts. Now let's say our circuit. Um, Let's say our circuit is real simple, right? It's what I told you last time. Um, the question I have that everyone seems to get confused. Okay, it's a battery with a switch, okay? An inductor, right? And that's it. So when I close the switch, right? When I close and then open, 
Okay. Now I'm not going to answer the question I'm posing, but what I want to show you here is what happens in this system. So self-resonant frequency. Okay, that's what we're trying. That's what I'm trying to express to you right now. Right. If you have a really big inductance and you have a really lot of capacitance, which would be like a bunch of really small wires, right? Which is what I've been talking about then the self-resonant frequency is going to be pretty low because you have a big inductance and a high capacitance and when you look at that with frequency and I'm not going to write down the equations here I'm trying to keep this simple um, when you look at that though you'll find out the frequencies are pretty low the self-resonant frequencies so what you see all right, on the oscilloscope right, this is what you'd see if everything was perfect you'd see a voltage across here and again as the current starts to flow the field starts to build up so you start to build up the flow, and then when you disconnect the switch, um, this is just a smaller component, you know, I'm not talking about delaying the current and all this kind of stuff right now. But when you open this switch, okay, on the oscilloscope, right, voltage, uh, technically, well, I'm drawing this backwards. I'm, I'm just going to show you, what I'm trying to express is a bit difficult, because I'm doing it in a different way here. But basically, let's just pretend like your voltage doesn't look like much. Sometimes you have spikes and stuff here. Um, so when you turn it on, right, and you turn it off, so you have a magnetic field here. Remember, we're talking about voltage, right? So not current. We're not going to worry about current right now. But in voltage, um, what you've got here is exactly what I've shown. Now, the difference is that when you get to this point where you open the switch, there's a magnetic field built up in here, right? And so the component itself, right, the component itself, which is the resistance, um, and then the inductance with a capacitor across it. So when you disconnect the switch to this, this is allowed to ring at its resonant frequency. So you actually see it do that. Now, if you were to take, right, it dips below, right, zero, but if you were to take a measurement from here to here, <clears throat> if you were to measure that time, okay, you could calculate what the internal capacitance is of this circuit. Now again, in, a, in an inductor like this, the first thing you see, uh, from my understanding, is parallel resonance. There's also series resonance, and it happens later, okay, um, from my understanding. Uh, now quote me on that 100%. Like I said, you can look it up. I'll link that stuff in the description. But the point is, is that what happens right here you what you and this happens fast like I drew this pretty big but this happens real fast like it's on a small component it 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 jumps so fast you really can't even see it unless you zoom way 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 in now now if our inductor was 1600 Henry right and uh, we had one UF of stray uh, parasitic capacitance right okay then you can calculate the resonant frequency of this is going to be pretty low um, compared to something that is only like uh, you know 16 micro Henry or something um, but anyway the point is, is I'm trying to I'm trying to teach you that that this domain is actually considered the high frequency domain even though you're not applying a high frequency okay and if you start switching this guy on super fast right if this time right is in the high frequency domain well then you're actually going to start seeing basically you're just introducing the pulse and it will you shut it off and it'll automatically ring so you don't even really see the on pulse that's actually ideal for certain situations because you're actually creating pulse DC right so the pulse is like really 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 short and yet you have this huge delay of ringing, especially on something this big, okay? So, um, uh, in, the, in the last video, there's probably things I'm forgetting here, but I wanted to give you something today to chew on because 
because next week we're going to be talking, I know what it was, next week we're going to be talking about certain things. Um, so there is a technology that's fairly old um, and it is called the delay line. Alright, now they used to use mercury delay lines, then they started using um, some sort of a wire, nickel, it might be nickel, something nickel wire, to create delay lines, um, and they actually, they actually twist the motor, I mean the wire, and the twist in the wire is like a sound wave, basically, and they, they actually um, create a delay for the old computers. Now there's also magnetic delay, right, where you take a, a f two ferrite beads, and you wrap one, and you wrap another, right, and there's, there's, there's a delay in the magnetism transferring the signals here, right? And these are a different, these are magnetic delay lines, but they also make, and you cannot find almost any information on this whatsoever, which is a bit bizarre. I think by the time they figured this out, the technology, there was something new, um, so they'd never really put it into practice. But they make, um, they make electrical delay lines, which is current delay lines, okay? You guys keep saying you can't delay current, but yeah, you absolutely can. Uh, I was hoping to get this done to show this to you today, but I, I didn't, um, so hopefully soon. But inside here, there's something such as a copper pipe, and on the outside, there's something such as like an aluminum sheath, and all this does is add tremendous amounts of capacitance to this coil. So when you put in a signal here, um, all this parasitic capacitance from my understanding, um, don't quote me on that, from my understanding, it delays, right, the reaction due to how this interacts with each other, right, and you can, you can actually have, um, oh, the kids outside, you can have, up, you know, microseconds of delay, no problem, in a system like this. I actually want to build one of these, but you can literally find no information on a del electrical delay line. Um, and basically, the huge inductors I'm talking about are like huge, right? My question I tried to pose to you is what happens if you shut this switch and open it before current gets through this coil? And some of you think you, that's impossible, but you guys are confused. Um, they used to actually make a, a current delay lines, okay, signal delay lines. Um, from my understanding, it's actually delaying the propagate, it's actually delaying the propagation of the current itself, uh, not, not just the voltage. Now, current is super, super, super fast, but you can delay it. So in this situation, if this inductor was ginormous, it acts just like a delay line, okay? And you actually get that um, delay. Now, I'm going to link you to a video that explains the, uh, the EMF, right, and the back EMF at all times. Um, EMF. So, zero line here. So the reason I'm going to link you to that video is because this guy's smart, and he explains what a delay line is and how it works, but his is similar to this magnetic coupling. Um, well, actually, it's, it's actually a little bit different. His delay line is posed up of many inductors which have to charge, which delay the current, and then he's got capacitors tied to, um, to ground. And what this basically is, is a transmission line, right? So the current has to come in here and charge up this cap and then it's delayed every time it goes through another one of these okay and this guy's video he goes through all this I'm not gonna do it I'm gonna sh send you there um, I'm gonna send you another video that talks about um, the nodes and anti nodes and what a standing wave looks like right we we are getting into a point where we're creating standing waves in a system like this um, so back to this you know you have an inductor that's this big you have all this capacitance you actually end up with this type of scenario right here except this component wasn't very big I think they were about that big on small ones um, however we're doing it a little differently we're trying to delay current through the same means that this functions through a high capacitance with a bunch of little wire or a huge amount of wire with a bunch of windings and, and, and capacitance um, and there, like I said there's other things you can do like cover the thing with copper or aluminum or something and make it make the the external capacitance, right, make this capacitance actually act more like this capacitance. So there'll be capacitance between um, the whole system and, and ground. Okay. 
So, anyway, that's that's all I wanted to express to you guys today. I, I really didn't want to make this really long. Um, time is it? It's 8, 8.23. So, I need to get going. Okay. Uh, I need to leave. So, God bless you guys. Have a good day. Like I said, and I will always say, read the Bible more. You know, everyone takes that for granted, but... Uh, I actually have an app on my phone, and it throws me one verse every day. And I go grab that one verse, and I look at it. And that's one way that kind of helps me uh, uh, continuously uh, read the Bible. Because, um, like I said, you don't have to be religious to read the Bible. Uh, but spirituality is important, in my opinion. Okay, God bless you guys. Have a good day. Thumbs up.